Uh, thank you, ma'am. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, let me also join my colleagues in saying that we are extremely pleased with the result that we have achieved from uh, today's conference. Uh, this was a unique conference in many ways uh, under very difficult circumstances. We were uh, having a, a kind of hybrid um, format for, for, for this conference. Uh, so the coronavirus uh, certainly affected the way we do business, but it did not affect the solidarity, the strong political will of the international community and their friendship and partnership with the people of Afghanistan. That I can say for sure. Uh, the conference was successful in achieving its goals. Uh, to renew the partnership between uh, the government of Afghanistan, government and people of Afghanistan, and the international partners um, uh, for our shared interests in uh, security and stability, in peace and development. Again, it is important to highlight that uh, the world community in Afghanistan reaffirmed that they have shared interest in addressing common concerns and threats to our security and uh, our way of, of, of life. Specifically, uh, as my colleagues uh, said uh, already, uh, the conference uh, achieved uh, uh, three things. One, uh, the government of Afghanistan and the international community agreed on a political and development program for the coming four years. Uh, second, uh, we agreed on a set of rules, principles, and uh, mutual accountability uh, uh, framework that while we are friends, brothers and sisters, but we need to account to each other on our obligations and responsibilities. Uh, this was extremely important uh, that uh, it will provide a high level of um, assurance and comfort to both sides. Uh, and the third achievement was pledges uh, from uh, both sides. Uh, the Afghan side pledged to do its part, uh, to shoulder the responsibility uh, for security, uh, and for reforms and good governance, and also to move with a strong political will uh, to achieve peace. And the international partners uh, agreed to provide uh, not just financial resources, uh, which is quite an impressive level of um, uh, uh, pledge, I mean, my, my colleagues talked about it, uh, over uh, 3 billion for the first year, um, around 13 billion uh, altogether uh, for the four years. Again, as I said earlier, that the COVID-19 might have affected the economies of our international partners, but not their generosity, not their ability to, to support. Um, also, our partners uh, pledge their political and, and security support. Uh, again, uh, for all of that, we are extremely grateful, uh, grateful to our partners, to uh, our host uh, country and our uh, co-hosts, especially uh, the government and people of Finland, the uh, um, United Nations, the host country, Switzerland, uh, and all of the over uh, uh, 90 countries and organizations that not only participated in the conference today, but uh, spoke at the conference. They shared their wisdom with us, uh, as well as uh, their pledges of, of assistance and, and, and support. Uh, let me quickly point out that uh, um, uh, these uh, pledges and support uh, 
uh, rests on a set of uh, conditionalities. Uh, my colleagues spoke about those conditionalities, but let me get a little bit into details. There are two sets of conditionalities here, uh, and the government of Afghanistan would like to be quite uh, um, transparent about them, uh, because it's our intention uh, to meet those conditionalities. Uh, we owe it to our people, and we owe it to the international taxpayers and supporters of, of Afghanistan. The first set of conditionalities relate to peace. While the international community unanimously, wholeheartedly supported the peace process and welcomed peace negotiations and demanded a ceasefire, but at the same time, they expressed their uh, concerns as well about the peace process. Uh, it's important that they uh, pointed out to, to the fact that the current level of violence is absolutely unacceptable in Afghanistan, and there will have to be an immediate ceasefire. Uh, this is a strong message uh, to the Taliban, that it's not just the people of Afghanistan who demand a ceasefire immediately now because of uh, uh, the emergency situation created as a result of the COVID-19 effects, but also the, uh, the fact that it's for too long and, and with horrible humanitarian consequences uh, for the people of Afghanistan. So the Taliban must listen uh, to the demand made by the entire world community, represented by these great uh, nations uh, today. Uh, second, the concerns that our partners also had about the peace process and the end state. Um, the process must be inclusive. The process must not be hindered by artificial obstacles. Uh, and the government of Afghanistan clearly stated its intentions that we will not be the ones uh, uh, creating obstacles to the peace process. We will be the ones with full commitment and strong political will uh, to enable the peace process to move ahead. And I hope the Taliban will have the courage to come out and show the same level of commitment to peace. Our international partners uh, stress the fact that not every kind of peace will be acceptable, and not any kind of peace will be sustainable. It will have to be peace that protects the basic rights of the Afghan people, the achievements, uh, the political, socio-economic uh, uh, achievements of the Afghan people over the past 19 years. Afghanistan will have to remain a democratic country, respectful of human rights, women's rights, and uh, the rights of the minorities. The outcome of the process of peace will have to be shaped by the free will of the Afghan people. Now, this message is music to the ear of the Afghan people. Thank you, our international partners. This is exactly our intention. This is exactly what we are trying to do with the peace process. Now, uh, the second set of conditionalities relate to good governance. And specifically, uh, uh, the message was, was given to the government of Afghanistan. Uh, 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 this message related to uh, respect for the rule of law, democracy and democratic processes and, and, and governance, respect for women's rights and women's participation and the participation of minorities in, in, in the process. It was a strong uh, demand for anti-corruption uh, through the entire system of, of governance. Uh, let me conclude by saying that uh, these messages were loud and clear, and the government of Afghanistan has every intention to uh, double its efforts uh, to meet uh, the basic expectations of our people and our international partners in this respect. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Minister Atmar, uh, for these uh, initial remarks and to all the speakers. Now I will open the floor to questions in the room and online. Just let me explain that as we have two of our speakers, the two ministers who spoke first, who are in the room, please uh, indicate to whom your question is addressed so that if it's one of the uh, ministers who are in the room, I will gladly let them come to the lectern and uh, answer to you. And the other thing, please uh, introduce yourself uh, when you ask your question. But I will start with a question in the room, and I don't need <laughs> you to introduce yourself, Laurent. Laurent Sierra from the Swiss News Agency. You have the floor, Laurent, for your question. Thank you. Question to both foreign ministers, Atmar and Havisto. Um, we heard this afternoon the U.S. strongly linking the continuation of their head after 2021 to concrete progress in the process in Qatar. So as you consider this conference here in Geneva's success, what kind of concrete impetus do you see uh, in the outcome for the process in Qatar? Thank you. Uh, I don't know which minister would like to start. Okay, Ms. Uh, uh, Minister Atmar, maybe? Um, we actually welcome uh, that uh, uh, conditionality to, to link uh, uh, assistance to progress on uh, specifically on the peace process. This will have to be seen especially by both sides, that if Afghanistan is to receive international assistance, we will have to make progress on peace. So there is incentive uh, for uh, uh, making progress on the peace front. The government of Afghanistan has every intention to make that progress, and not just to receive the international assistance, but to respond positively to the expectations of our people. And we hope that the Taliban will be able to uh, demonstrate a similar commitment and willingness. Uh, now, uh, I'm absolutely confident uh, that in the coming weeks, we will be making progress uh, if the Taliban uh, embrace the same spirit uh, for um, supporting peace and reconciliation in the country. Uh, we will be obviously um, uh, um, uh, looking at other aspects of this conditionality as well. It's not just linking it to Doha, it's also linking it to the end state. Uh, the state secretary was quite clear in saying that the, the scope and the size of international assistance will be determined by the outcome of the peace process. So. Uh, it's not only linked to the process, but it is also linked to the end state, to the outcome. Uh, and in this, we are on the same page. 